Let us give a round of applause. Let me give all the young people of labor a big round of applause. Let me see the young people hand in the air. Young people, labor picnic there. Let me see your hand in the air. Labor picnic. Labor picnic big. We massive. We large. Comrades, we want to move along. We want to welcome our next speaker. Our next speaker comes from Central Bastille. The Honorable Marcel Alibod. The Honorable Marcel Alibod. Natural beauty, you know. Yeah. No, I never been someone shy until I seen you rise. Still, I had to try. Yeah. Oh, yes. Let me get my words right and then approach her. Woman, I'll treat you like a man is supposed to. You'll never have to cry. No. I know everyone can relate to when they find a special someone. And she's royal, yeah, so royal. Yeah. Comrades of labor, what a crowd on Bank Street. Bank Street never see a crowd like this for a long time. Labor really got the masses following them. I want to pick up all the labor women. Let me hear you. Yes. What about labor picnic them where they be? Labor picnic, let me hear you. All the time. All the time. All the time. Yes, comrades. I want, of course, to congratulate the Garden Hotspurs. I know Peppers Vex, but I got to congratulate Garden Hotspurs for winning. Saddlers on Thursday, Tunnel, and I hear they leading now. We done in the final four. Congrats to Garden Hotspurs. I want to also congratulate the under 23 netballers for placing second in Antigua when they just came back there. But I want you to look around the crowd and see that the vast majority of people here today are young people, right down to the little children. Little children, where you be? Them is labor picnic picnic. That what they be. Young people, young people are attracted to labor. You know why young people are attracted to labor? Because they have seen labor's vision. Everywhere you look around this country, you can see labor's vision. Look at the families and you see what's happening. How many of you, your mothers or your grandmothers and grandfathers walked in the cane fields? Let me see your hands. Walk in the cane fields. Yes. But then your mothers or your fathers now walk in the service industry. Let me see your hands, those of you from the service industry. Yes. And now guess what? Your children are in universities. That is labor for you upward mobility of the people and that is why the young people are attracted to labor because labor has a vision and when you look at our young people they're not only on the, in the audience here you know they're on top here too you see them and i want you to wet your hand and wait for when we announce our slate of candidates because at the very top leadership Labor will show you that young people will be coming to the forefront to be the leaders of labor. That is the change you want. That is the change you want. Because we have young people who will be in the leadership for labor. And that slate will be balanced with experience and woman power. That's an unbeatable slate. More than 50% of the slate will be young people. And then you balance it with experience and woman power. You want something better than that going forward? That's an unbeatable combination. You can't beat that coming and going. So look out for that in 2013. Young people following labor. Young people, they want violence. And people up and down inciting them to slash tires and mash up people windscreen. Young people don't want that. Young people looking to have a good life. They want jobs. They're looking a good life. And I want you to know 
that 12.7 percent there is 12.7 percent of youth unemployment in the united states of america right now and i say it's getting worse in the great united states of america 12.7 percent youth unemployment and in europe the average is 24 percent 24 percent in europe average which means some countries are much more than that the average is 24 percent but here in St. Kitts and Nevis, look at our young people. They have pep in their step. Look at them. Pep in their step. For a small country like this, we are leading the way into how to get our young people working and learning skills. Pep in the young people's st step. And if you doubt me, check National Bank today. Check National Bank any Friday. Look at what's happening in the shops. The young people paying for the children now because pep in the step. This country is leading in every regard. And inside the pep, over 2,000 people, 1,300 of them are young women. Put your hands together for the young women of this country. 1,300 of them are young women, women power. And we now have women in construction. So look out, you can soon see them building homes. In this country, she is what we're doing. She's the wind that fills my sail. Oh, that woman. Us. And so what you have here is visionary leadership. And you see it because the PEP would not have been possible without the SIDF. Well, who thought of the SIDF? Who thought of it? Visionary leader, Dr. Denzel Llewellyn Douglas. A visionary leader thought of the PEP of SIDF. And I'll show you what vision is all about. When he come out with the SIDF, what you get from those who can't see no further than their nose? What you get from them? Oh, it's illegal. It's unconstitutional. All kind of thing. They abuse the SIDF. Less right and center. And no, hear them now. Because they're following now. They want it bad. They want to get their hands on it. They want to tell you what to do with it. They want to tell you all kind of things about it. That was Douglas's vision. And a lot of the other countries today who are also suffering from low revenue wish they had an SIDF. When somebody tell me that in one of them big circles here in St. Kitts, they had some talk about how poorly the Jamaica economy was doing and one of the big shot people them who against Douglas, you know, say, boy, what they need to do is send for Douglas and let him set up an SIDF in Jamaica. So they know how it go. They know how it go for the SIDF and don't let them fool you because the SIDF is going into almost every home in this country. Going into every home. It is you, the local people, who are benefiting from the SIDF. All the paved roads you see around here, where you think the money come from? You're supposed to say SIDF. Where the money come from? And who you think keeping them planes in the sky for us? And who you think giving all them agricultural farmers loans? And what about the building of homes for the people of this country where the money come from? What about Bastia High School renovation where the money come from? And where the people get in pay from? Well, how does the SIDF ain't doing nothing for the people of this country? How does the SIDF? And that is not the end of it. That is not the end of it at all. And so the SIDF also had to diversify its investment because you have to make sure that you have some investment in something. And that is why they invested in Kittishan Hill. And that is why they invested in Christoph Harbour. And I want to tell you something, you know, Christoph Harbour has over 2,000 acres of land in its development. 2,000 acres of land. The money that SIDF invested in Christoph Harbour gave the SIDF 30%. 30% of 
30% of the equity. That means that SIDF owns 30% of that investment. So now SIDF owns 30% of them 2,000 acres of land over there. You have to understand that. And the SIDF is me and you. So it's you own it. It's you own it. So don't anybody come and misrepresent what's happening in this country. It's you own it. Because if you decide to go into business with somebody and you put in seven out of ten, they put in seven out of ten dollars and you put in three dollars, well, you ain't own it to the extent of your three dollars. To all you own it together, one got seven dollars out of it and you got three dollars. That's what we're doing here with it. So the SIDF owns 30 percent of that big development over there. This country is bound to benefit from that. You and your children and your children's children is bound to benefit from that. So don't let them fool you. Visionary leadership, the same thing happened with Dubai. The Prime Minister with his vision was one of the first to go to Dubai. And then what you hear? Everywhere on the radio, Dubai, 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 Dubai. But next thing you know, guess who won go Dubai? Lindsey Grant. Guess who won go Dubai? Kansi Mitchum. Guess who won go Dubai? Janel Powell. All of them. After Douglas, their followers, they know nothing about leadership. Visionary leadership. And not only that, they come back and abusing the citizenship program. But guess who's setting up big citizenship program in the office? Kansi got the biggest one. She got one the biggest one. Grant them setting up. So when you hear them talking about selling passport, ask them what they're setting up in their office to do. They are hypocrites. Hypocrites. But they can't stop visionary leadership. And that is why the people are attracted to labor. So one of the things we want to do going forward is to have some constitutional reform. Because 30 years of independence now, and you see that that constitution was only a political document. All of the flaws of the constitution are coming to the fore to haunt all of those who make it. That's a constitution that was made by Pam. And so you have people like Sam Kanda and Timothy Harris, who in 2010 ran on a labor ticket. They put out the hand and they take the money from the Labour Party. All the signs you see up, Mark, Vote, Harris and Son, paid for by the Labour Party. They take all the resources. They take all the funds. They go around and you help them with their campaigns in every way. And then they want to go and take your vote and turn it over to Pam, where they can't be right. When I see them in the Monday, watch them, they can't even look up. They can't look up. Because it has to be wrong. That there is a stain on our democracy. And one of the things that this Labour Party has done is to strengthen our democratic process. Look at all the radio stations we have. All them free. Free to talk morning, noon, night. Talk till they're sick. Because Douglas give them license after license after license. Freedom of speech in this country. Enhancing our democratic process. Tim and them want to come and put a stain on it. Because it is undemocratic and it is morally wrong for them to go out there and represent to people that they are labor. And then want to take the labor vote and go and do something else with it. Without coming back to the people. That's misrepresentation. That is a breach of trust. That is deceit. That is treachery. And so we say to you, the people in number seven, and the people in number three, and the people in the country, you must call on them to resign their seats. They must resign their seats and go back to the people to find out if that is what the people want them to do with their vote. That is the position in Trinidad and Tobago. That is the position in Antigua and Barbuda. Because they recognize that you should not have what you call a bait and switch policy. You must not have that kind of deceit because it is a stain on your democratic process. It is a stain and they must resign their seats and move out of there. And then you also need some constitutional reform with respect to the boundaries. So with the boundaries, we are now looking at changing the boundaries in accordance with the constitution. 
And now that we are doing that, they ball in. And it's them at the Constitution. They changed the boundaries twice. They changed the boundaries in 1983. And we had an election in 1984. They fixed up the boundaries so they could win the election in 1984. They changed the boundaries in 1988. And we had an election in 1989 in this country. Pam, twice changed the boundaries. Where what happened? What wrong if Labour saying it's time to change the boundaries? The last time we changed boundaries was 1988, 15 years ago. The boundaries are out of work. The Constitution says that each constituency must have in an equal number or near equal number of inhabitants. That is not the case right now. And so to bring it in line, we say we need to change them up so that you can get an equal number or near equal number of inhabitants as the Constitution says. And so there is where we are at with that. And we are saying to you, the people, that that is what the Constitution says that we must do. And so we're moving forward with the boundary changes in this country because that is what the Constitution demands. And so we have to look at that as well. And so what I'm saying to you to end is that on Wednesday, we want to thank you for coming out on Monday. And on Wednesday, we go back to Parliament. We go back to Parliament in the interest of you, the people of this country, because we have to complete the bill to give you your long service gratuity. We have to complete the bill for that. All of you who are working up in Balaho and who are working in all these other places around here, where you're working for more than 10 years and you don't have a pension scheme, this good government will make sure that you get a long service gratuity. That we want to do on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, we also want to do something called unemployment benefit for those persons who are working and who pay in their social security and who are now temporarily unemployed. Your good government will ensure that you get a little something to tide you over until you get a next job. So unemployment benefit will be passed in the House on Wednesday. We also will be looking at the Immigration Act to ensure that those people from the other countries who are living with us all this time, we're always an inclusive party in labor, always. All those people who are living with us all this time from the Santo Domingo, from Guyana, Jamaica, Trinidad, wherever, we are saying that we must do something to help you with your status because this is a good government. This is a labor government. And that is why on Wednesday, we'll be also looking at that when we go into the house. And so we invite you, those of you who are not working, to come out on Wednesday again in support of your government as we go into parliament to pass laws to affect positively the lives of the people of this country. And so we want to thank you for coming out in your numbers today because labor is good and all the time and so we want to thank you and in full confidence in full confidence we march forward with our labor leaders because labor is the only united party the only party that looks out for those who are least able to take care of themselves good night and thank you for coming out are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Standing taller to face the darkest and the hardest of times. We'll be taking care of all the children thereof. But if it's required, we'll be on the front line. Comrades of Labor! Comrades of Labor! Let us give Master the Labor a round of applause. Good presentation. Woman power! Let me see the labor women them. Let me see the labor women them. Not you cutie, not you. Me not talk about you cutie.